So since Ilan Ramon and the Columbia Space Shuttle tragedy, Israel hasn't had the opportunity to send any of its citizens to space. And this year, in coordination with the Ramon Foundation, uh, former Israeli Air Force pilot and entrepreneur Eitan Stiba is going to become the second Israeli in space when he flies the International Space Station as a private astronaut. It's my absolute pleasure to welcome Eitan to speak about the scientific experiments and educational outreach and everything that he's planning to do while he's in space. Thank you very much, Kovi. And uh, the person you just interviewed, Garrett Reisman, the astronaut, he's the... He's to blame for me deciding to go to space because he was uh, managing the, uh, uh, the SpaceX uh, Dragon um, spacecraft program and I visited him there and then he, when they succeeded first time to, to connect and bring people to the International Space Station, um, I just called to wish him uh, success and he said you're the next you're going next so it seemed like a dream um, and it still is part of a dream because the the mission will take place only a year from now uh, but I feel it's an inspirational mission and uh, the closest expression that I I would like to share with everyone here is uh, the Van Gogh story night if you don't mind to show it Kovi. Just pulling that up now, one second. Okay. There you see the uh, unclear lines. It's a mix of imagination and reality. It's a, um, it's blending of the, the hills of the village, nature, blending of all these into the sky, being one part of it. On the left side, uh, just left of the tree, you can see the ISS uh, painted into there. But he was uh, really, uh, uh, this is really inspiring and in showing the, the connection that the sky and earth go together. It's not that you go to, to space in order to um, research only space travel and uh, the moon and mars and all those programs but it's all lot lots of the work performed on the iss are to better life on earth so i'm pl i just started my plan i'm going to space probably in a year from now and i would like to share with you how i'm doing how i'm preparing myself towards this mission and uh, um, Coming from an investment background, I'll bring to you the, the tools that I use for uh, impact investing, which I'm doing for many years now, providing essential infrastructure and services to frontier markets, to underserved communities. And from that, I'm trying to build the mission in the best and have the, the largest impact of my personal mission on society. So the first step is really to define clear objectives and measurable results. So the areas that we decided to focus on are three. Innovation, which is not only a, a technological, which is a very natural uh, focus of, uh, of space related uh, activities but also on academic research, on arts, humanities, storytelling, anything that can inspire people to dream, to do better. The second sector is education, more to the younger generation, to join STEM studies, to dream, to believe in their dreams, and and get more, more and more involved in, uh, in uh, whatever they have in mind and creation and not only to become an astronaut, but to see that things can be achieved and, uh, and, uh, and involve more and more children in the educational sector. And the third, if you can press again, it's obviously the cooperation, the ISS is celebrating 20 years, has celebrated last year 20 years of 
continuous people being on the station, thousands of experiments. Um, so the cooperation, Kovi, if you can press another button, is starting with involving more and more government agencies, sharing and cooperating between private sector and government, public sector, which is this case. It, this is a natural development. The, the private sector getting more and more involved in this space exploration is very similar to other sectors like water and energy, where initially government would start, finance, and perform, execute, and later the private sector stepped in and started taking over and until a stage of investment, complete investment by private sector. And here we see this trend, and I see it as a very natural development. So the cooperation is between uh, government agencies, between Israeli agencies and private sector and international, like we see here uh, all over the world, uh, uh, we will be an international team and we will have cooperation of all uh, space agencies from uh, different countries, the European, the Russian, Japanese, Israeli, obviously. And uh, um, hopefully have a really successful international cooperation. So we use in our impact investment, Kovi, if you can go to the next slide, we use a tool which we call the Vital Impact Diamond. So it's a, it's a tool where we define the four main angles, which are um, the beneficiaries, who are the beneficiaries of this mission, and there we want to plan on to reach more and more children and, and young people. Uh, in the innovation side, we want to reach the, the startups, the uh, um, all the ind industrial partners um, all over. And, and in the cooperation, we wish to really reach global cooperation, awareness to better life on Earth, and get uh, more and more people involved in the mission. Then, uh, for example, in essentiality, the question is, can such an effect be achieved through another tool? Are there alternatives? This is a question we ask ourselves in order to decide wh what to do and which experiments to carry out there. Um, our focus on innovation will be tech for good. So things that will will do experiments, will do, uh, will take technological uh, uh, experiments to space mainly to, to prove that uh, they are good for society, they are good for developing countries, for developing societies, and uh, the, the basically improve the quality of life of people on Earth. Um, one important aspect of the whole mission is, uh, to, is affordability of services. So I, I'm a sincere believer that the, the start is very expensive, it will, space travel will be, the cost will be reduced by competition, by a, a more and more people wanting to go there and understanding the, the advantages of such a, a space travel. And then um, locality is about, from my point of view, it's more involving more and more Israeli companies. Israeli uh, companies are less involved in space uh, exploration, the very few, I believe there will be more and more, not only in satellites, but in communication and life sciences and many more sectors. And the last angle of intrinsic is, uh, well, I intend to devote all my time there on the International Space Station, um, promoting these impact objectives. So the question in intrinsic is whether if I would spend more time on, in space, if it would have a larger effect, if I would go to the moon or to Mars, if that would even have a larger impact on society, I believe that the answer is yes, but we will study that and come with a, a, with a plan for me. Then the next phase would be the measurement 
Okay, so we define the tool, we have the tool, we define our objectives, what we're going to take. We have a scientific uh, committee, educational committee. These committees will uh, select from all the choices of uh, proposals that will be presented, uh, they will select which of them are, are best to take with us according to this criteria. Um, and then we'll measure. And the measurement will be basically in two aspects. The first will be outputs, how many experiments, how many people were got involved, young people that were uh, took part in the mission, um, how many industries were involved, how many government agencies took part in the, in the mission. That's easy to measure. The, the tougher um, thing to measure, and this we are challenged by, is to see the long-term outcomes of this uh, investment in this mission. So will, how many agencies uh, will increase their involvement in, uh, in the space sector? Will the budgets for education grow in this, in this sector? Will there be more startups in the space ecosystem? How many children will prefer to learn STEM studies? And, and so forth. And uh, I believe that uh, uh, our first step, our first private mission to space will trigger more, will trigger competition, will trigger innovation. All this will make the, the sector more efficient and more uh, accessible to everyone. And last, not least, if you can uh, show the next slide, Kovi, the once we have all the mission defined and defined our measurement of output and outcomes, we will try and um, align the work we're doing with the United Nations Social Development Goals. There are 17 of those. Um, uh, for example, uh, water uh, purification uh, projects, is it, answer SDG 6, um, affordable energy, clean affordable en energy is uh, answers uh, SDG 7, and uh, climate action obviously which will, will be the next uh, global challenge after the COVID is, uh, is uh, disappeared, is gone. Um, no hunger, pro producing better nutrition, food, which is done uh, continuously in the in the space station and so forth. So we will we will compare and uh, check the uh, um, the results of our experiments with the United Nations SDGs. And as I uh, started the our short talk, I I really see the close link of the space of the work done in space to the our life on Earth. Thank you very much for listening. Eitan, thank you so much. Um, I think everybody can see from, from what you just showed how much of a huge impact and how much potential there is behind this educational mission um, and how much good science we're going to get out of it as well. Uh, and I really look forward to seeing all the content, all the videos that you put out from space. It'll be especially great to show my students so they can see an Israeli astronaut live in space. So thank you so much for sharing with us. Thank most you. Of the, most of the children that I meet, um, they ask me, will you speak Hebrew when you're there? I told them, yes, I'm going to speak to you in Hebrew live <laughs> from space. <laughs> You'll have to teach the other astronauts Hebrew as well. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time, Eitan. I really appreciate Pleasure. it. Um, Next, uh, before our next speaker, we're just going to show a short video um, about the Space Tech 2021 conference that's happening tomorrow, uh, which will highlight um, space industry and research here in Israel and around the world with uh, guest speakers, including Gwen Shotwell of SpaceX and Charles Bolden, former NASA administrator. Um, so we'll now show you a short video about that conference tomorrow, and then we'll go to our next speaker. Welcome to space. We are thrilled to invite you to Ramon Space Tech 2021 conference. The conference is powered by All Seated. Let's take a look. 
Our venue is located on the moon. Once you enter it, you can go directly to the main auditorium, where you can hear talks from SpaceX presidents Gwen Shotwell, Ellen Stoffan, Sara El Amiri, Charlie Bolden, Michael Sufordini, and of course, the second Israeli in space, Eitan Stiva. All around the floor, you can find booths of the top Israeli space companies and understand how they change the world. At the heart of the conference are professional workshops by the world's leading space experts in the fields of agritech, medicine, radiation, AI, air and water recycling, habitats, and more. Each workshop will be in a room named after one of mankind's greatest space programs, Apollo, Gemini, Mercury, the shuttle program, and Artemis. You'll be able to step inside and learn from these experts all you need to know about opportunities in the field. The main hall is designed as a space bar on the moon. Here you can network, chill, and enjoy the vibe of this amazing conference. See you on January 25th.